Arthur is going to be telling us one of his most one of our most engaging and insightful talks around the battlefield of fate. Please welcome to the Atos X stage, Arthur Milhausen. Thank you, uh, Jeremy, for your nice words. Hello, everyone. Today, I want to tell you about a pressing social issue. No, it's not about nuclear arms and it's not about immigration. I'm here to talk to you about fear and more so fear of the future. We live in a fast changing world, which can be quite scary. And at times it can even feel like a battlefield. And I have a confession to make. I'm one of those people who are afraid. Technology is daunting. Take social medias, for example. I'm afraid of the privacy impact to the point that I don't even use them. But for those of you who are braver than me and use social media, I would like to check that everyone has been scrolling through their news feeds and is keeping up with the news of the world. If you have, great. So you all know that Bill Gates invented the coronavirus, right? But luckily, he is also creating a vaccination. And that will reduce the symptoms of the virus and allow a nano chip to be injected into you, enabling the elite and the government to follow you, control you, and even eliminate you via 5G. That is, if you haven't first already reacted to the vaccine side effects and transformed into a chimpanzee. And by the way, I got vaccinated myself, and when I look at myself in the mirror, I don't think I did transform into a chimpanzee. But I'm absolutely sure that when I ask my kids, I think it will get a slightly different answer. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, in this present day, we are surrounded by pessimism related to groundbreaking technologies. But today I will talk about why the pessimists of the past were wrong and how to be optimistic about the future. Let me give you an example of those pessimists of the past. When the bicycle began to rise in popularity in the 1890s, many folks, including doctors, were afraid of this new piece of transportation technology. They claimed that cycling was bad for your health, especially for women, and it could cause them to become insane. I'm sorry, ladies, please do not shoot the messenger. Today, it's very hard to imagine anyone getting worked up over a bicycle, but somehow humans still resist technological progress. Consider some of the things we worry about right now. Robots taking over our jobs. EMP attacks bringing society to a halt. 5G networks harming us in some insidious way. It's a tendency that humans have had for centuries. But fear of new technologies goes beyond the tech itself. It's challenging our sense of stability and cultural norms. And those stories are not new. Eh? Innovation, technology is always accompanied by fear and uncertainty. So where do they come from? And what would help us overcome such fear? Let me start with a hot topic that has caused a lot of fear recently. Do you know where the word vaccine comes from? It's derived from the Latin words variole vaccine, and that means smallpox of the cow. In the 18th century, there was this countryside doctor, Edward Jenner. And for the online influence followers, no, I'm not talking about the Kardashian family. But at a time where viruses were unknown, Edward Jenner noticed that the girls who were working with cows were the only people in society that did not suffer from smallpox. And he was wondering if that was caused by the fact that those girls were working with cows and got in touch with an organism causing cowpox. And he was brave enough to ask himself a question, even though he was the only one in doing so. Will those organisms also protect from human smallpox? And after some experiments, he managed to create the first vaccine. And with the world's first vaccine came the world's first anti -vaxxers. Reports of people mowing like a cow, growing a cow head, and even a straw doll representing the doctor was set on fire. That sounds very familiar, doesn't it? This resistance to change and the new vaccine meant that it took us 200 years to make the world free of smallpox. 
However, eventually science prevailed over fear, and that is what I call perseverance. Fear of new things by far predates the bicycle. If you take a look at the famous picture, The Last Supper from Leonardo da Vinci, what do you miss here? You see knives, glasses, plates, a lot else, but there are no forks. In the Middle Ages, the fork was considered as an instrument of the devil, and it took us eight centuries from its first recorded sighting to become employed universally at tables in the West. But what about something that is on your and my tables today? There was this drink that could you make you sterile or drive you into a state of hysteria. Would you allow such a drink in your society, in our society, on your table? I guess that would be an absolutely no-go, right? It was coffee. Scientific and technological breakthroughs are usually suffering from their own success. What was a breakthrough yesterday is considered absolutely normal today. And there's this comedian, and he has a story about passengers on an airplane just before takeoff. And he tells of a plane full of angry passengers waiting on the tarmac, and they are complaining that the Wi-Fi is not working. Fast forward 30 minutes after takeoff and the plane was full of happy passengers. Was everybody excited that they were high in the sky flying like a bird in one of the greatest inventions ever? Uh, of course not. The internet connection was restored. You cannot stop technology. You can only think about the direction and how can you think about the direction technology will go? By asking questions. Unfortunately, with the rise of accessibility to information in this modern day, we've seen a fall in the number of questions asked. And did you know that nowadays students are five times less critical than in the past? If you don't ask questions, how will you learn? It's all about why, why, why. Critical thinking is not just posting your opinion on Twitter or Facebook. You need to challenge your teachers, your colleagues, your boss. Challenge the norm and the status quo. And I know eh, it's quite difficult. It requires an open mind. Uh, you need to talk to people and we find it hard to accept a different opinion. And it's hard to create room for critical thinking. It asks for braveness. Be provocative. But that is the reason we need to build in an environment where being critical is not negative, but seen as something to find a solution or to improve the final result. And I believe we should teach future leaders of today to ask questions, to reason and to explain their steps. Because with more questions comes greater understanding and with greater understanding, there's less fear for the future. And how do I know? that critical thinking with new technologies forms a solution to the problems of the future. Because it has worked in the past. And life as we know it was not always as pleasant in Europe as it is right now. Diseases and epidemics, they struck mercilessly. Cholera, typhoid, the plague, malaria, smallpox, not even to mention flu and diarrhea. At that time, eh, still life-threatening. Nature decided you would die around 35. However, even in such bad times, within a few generations, life expectancy is doubled. I mean, we have food, we have hygiene, we have medication. Humanity created the world our ancestors described as heaven. But there's this little voice eh, in the back of your head asking, yes, but what about losing my job? What about the future of my kids? What about destroying the planet? That sounds all very negative, right? And do you notice the match with the resistance to vaccinations? There was this philosopher, Sir Karl Popper, and he said, optimism is a moral duty. We're not living in a perfect world, and yes, we face a lot of huge problems. But we cannot lose sight on our ability as a species to solve problems. 
you remember this hole we made in the ozone layer? We fixed it. It was not the first, and it will not be the last problems that humans have caused and fixed. And I believe that the proven methods of solving problems are those of science and technology. In doing so, we have solved hunger. In a lot of places, we avoided natural disasters. We fought diseases, and we even restored wild nature. And progress that does not happen by itself. Eh? There is no mysterious force that propels humanity upward, and that it guarantees that the story ends well. We need to work hard, and asking questions will help generate ideas. And thanks to exchanging and cross-fertilization of ideas, eh? new ideas and new solutions will emerge. And ideas, they do have sex, you know. Changes are with us all the time. And fear for new things is with us too. But what was strange and new yesterday is now completely accepted today. Thinking of the past will put changes into perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, my digital dream is a world where the voice of fear in the back of your head is met quickly and confidently with critical thinking, where we ask questions, understand and drive new technologies and sciences to solve the problems of the future. And to conclude, I would like to ask you, when you walk out of your room later today, and you bump into fear, when you hear this little voice in the back of your head, please start asking those questions. Encourage critical thinking. 